One of the core teachings in the Nididhyasana text, no matter whether it is the Ashtavaka Gita, the Avaduta Gita, the Mandukya Upanishad, the Ribu Gita, is that we are already what we are seeking. And this is drilled into us in the Ashtavaka Gita, where Ashtavaka is trying to drill into us that the self, the Atman, the undifferentiated consciousness at the core of you and I, which connects us as one, which is the ultimate substratum of Brahman, the ultimate reality, is not far away. It's not a destination to get to. We are already that right now. But that's very hard for us to understand from an egoic jiva level. We can't understand how we can truly be the self, the Atman. We are already enlightened right now, but we've got this layer of conditioning that eclipses this true reality of the true self. And so I want to read to you a verse today from the Ashtavaka Gita, which is plain and clear upon where the self arises, where the Atman, the undifferentiated consciousness is, and how far it is to get to. So without further ado, the self, which is absolute, effortless, immutable, and spotless, is neither far away nor limited. It is verily ever attained. So Ashtavaka gives us a glimpse of where the Atman is and what is required to be it. As he says in this verse, that it's never attained, it's ever attained. It's always within us. It is that eternal essence that is one with the ultimate reality of Brahman. But when we engage in spiritual practice, and we are on the path, then we often get confused because we have a goal, but the gold really is fool's gold. Because often when we get to a certain goal in our spiritual practice, we realize we've only opened up another avenue or channel to further our practice. William Walker Atkinson once said that as we go up the mountain on a spiritual practice, we often get to one peak and then look above and then we realize there's another peak to climb. And the point with what Atkinson was trying to say is that the destination is the journey itself and that we need to get out of this habit of thinking we need to attain goals. This comes from a linear perspective. And a lot of us, particularly in the modern day, have a linear perspective. And when we think in a linear way, we are in some sense out of sync with nature because nature itself is non-linear and it's cyclical. And so when we relate this to the realization of the self, the self is not something that we can attain. It's not a goal because it's ever present and it's always there, even though we think it's something to attain. Now, I'm not saying that you should give up your spiritual practice. You need to continue to cultivate and to, in some sense, down-regulate your sense of ego through spiritual practice so that this light begins to shine more and more through you. But one of the shortcuts is to try and reinforce into your mind that you are already the self. Now, I'm not talking to you as the ego or the jiva, but I'm talking to you as the ultimate substratum. I'm talking to you as the Atman. You are already that. It's not far away. It's not a place to get to. It's already there within you. And so Ashtavrika mentions in this chapter, effortless, that the self is effortless. What he means here is that the self has nothing to exert for. There is no need for action. The self actually is ever inactive. It is tranquil, it is calm, it is serene, because it is one without a second. And even saying one is, in some sense, not sufficient, but we are, in some sense, at the perils of language, so we can only use the word one. And so the best way to say it is the Atman is one without a second, and so it is completely inactive, because even in the realm of action, there is not a doer doing the actions, if you understand what I'm saying. The doer of actions and the thinker of thoughts are the one who causes trouble in the world. The one who is in the effortless grace of the world or the effortless flow, to use Taoist terminology, Wu Wei, there is not a person doing it. It is the universe doing you. It is not the jiva doing it once you reside as the self. 
And that's what the Stravaker is trying to say here is it's ever effortless. It doesn't have to exert any effort. It is completely inactive because it's purely calm, even though our action arises in the self as a wave arises in the infinite ocean. Another interesting word he uses in this verse is spotless. Now, what he means here is that the self, Atman, is without attributes. And so it is qualityless. It is without qualities. Now, this is where you need to understand the differences between Saguna Brahman and Nirguna Brahman. Saguna Brahman is with qualities, Brahman with qualities. Now, what that means is from an absolute sense is that all of us listening and watching this right now as a jiva, as a personality, as someone who is a doer of actions in the world, you are in the field of Saguna Brahman. You are the non-dual reality with qualities. Even though you identify as this person and you think you're this person, that's all well and good. But all that's really happening from the non-dual perspective is Brahman itself. Now, the opposite to this is Nirguna Brahman. Nirguna Brahman is Brahman without qualities. And we could say that this is probably the ultimate nature of Brahman, which is without qualities. It's Brahman without qualities, without the material world, without all of the energy and matter of the universe. It is just without qualities, even though that's who we truly are as well. We are still Nirguna Brahman. The true nature of ourself is Nirguna Brahman, is without attributes, without qualities. And so in residing in Nirguna Brahman, we can actually interact and effortlessly move through the Saguna Brahman realm without encountering any problems because we're not identifying with the jiva. We're not identifying with the self with qualities, Saguna. We are purely free from the qualities that have been inculcated within us and the conditioning that we hold on to. And so the Atman is all pervasive. It is the ultimate reality. It is not far, nor is it near. And it is not limited ultimately. It can never be limited. It's unlimited. Obviously, it's eternal. And this is what Stravaka is trying to point out. It's not something that is bound and not a goal. Because even when you, if you said the Atman was a goal, it's a thing that we need to reach. And that is completely different from how we would think about eternity and the non-linear perspective of the Atman. And so the Atman is not limited. Things that we see, sense objects, even the senses themselves are limited. They work within a sphere of limitation where things can be attained because we don't have it. If we don't have something in the material world, we can access that, we can attain that because we don't have it, we lack that thing. But when we talk about the Atman, we do not lack that. We just forget that we are that because we have layers and layers of conditioning which eclipse our true nature. But we need to remember that it is our true nature and we don't need to attain it because it's ever attained. It's always a part of us. And this is one of the core understandings of all non-dualism is to get out of this idea that we need to get somewhere to attain something. And it's just a, a change of thinking. We need to reorient our thinking into the way nature actually is. When we look out into the world of nature, it does not think in a linear motion. It is not a linear system. It is a non-linear system. And so we are nature as well, but the way we've been trained to think eclipses our natural thinking, which then eclipses our awareness of the true self. But so we then we need to do the work to reorient our thinking back into the way nature actually is within ourselves so that we can fully embody and imbibe the true self, the Atman, the ultimate undifferentiated consciousness of reality that you are. Shanti, shanti, shanti.